so easy to start. How do you feel today, my boy? Happy, sir. Merry to sit here as always. If you wish, dear boy, here's the doctor come to see you. Well, he certainly is looking better. Not thirsty, are you? If that boy is thirsty, I'll eat my head. Are you? Yes, ma'am. I'm rather thirsty. It's very natural. He should be thirsty. Can you and me give him a little tea? Thank you, doctor. Now you get up now, ma'am. You may. And take a little fresh air. Be careful not to keep him too warm, Mrs. Bedouin. And also be careful not to keep him too cold as well. He's a fine boy, don't you think, Dr. Grimley? Couldn't tell you. Where did he come from? I haven't the faintest idea. He was arrested and stealing my pocket, pocket handkerchief. But when the shopkeeper told us what really happened, he was released from the magistrate. I brought him here to make what offense I could. But I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to the child. He's deceiving my evil plan. He stole your pocket handkerchief, didn't he? Then he's still more, sir. What do you know of him? Nothing? Only that he's an orphan. And yet, it's strange. There's something in that boy's face. I can't explain it, but I seem to have seen him before, somewhere a long time ago. Stop it, nonsense. You're imagining things. Yes, what is it? What does he want? Thank you. Oh, let me give you some... Hey, wait a moment. Oh, come back. Oh, I really, really wish some books to be returned today. Why not send all of them? Yes, do let me take them. Please, sir. Oh, um, very well, my boy, very well. If you wish, you shall. Now, here's what I want you to do. You give Mr. Jessup these books. It's just down the road, and say you came to pay the four pounds ten that I owe him. Here's five pounds. No need to rush, but I shall expect you back in ten minutes. She's very pretty lady, isn't she, sir? Yes, it's a portrait of my daughter Agnes. I'll take the books there now, sir. Yes, you take the books. Do you really expect me to come back, do you? With a new suit of clothes at the back and a five pound note in his hand. My dear Mr. Brownlow, if he does, I'll eat my head. Dr. Grimwick, look at the portrait. Can't you see an extraordinary resemblance between Oliver and my daughter Agnes? Hmm, couldn't you? Can't say I do. Well, in ten minutes, Dr. Grimwick, when the boy returns, I think he'll see you. Yes, Mr. Brownlow, ten minutes.
why didn't you write my dad? You tell us you were coming. We didn't write something, we want to stop it. Cool, look at this, a five pound note. That's my again. No, no, my dad. Mine, girl, mine. You can have the word. If that ain't mine, I'll take the word back. Oh, dang, this is partly for a girl. Fair enough, keep it here. That's for myself, trouble, and I'll have another banana. You better have the books. Start a library. <laughs> You can't keep the books on my list. They belong to Mr. Bramble. If he finds out you got them, he'll be here after you. Oh, he'll be after me, will he? Leave him alone, Bill. What did you tell him about us? Nothing. That remains to be seen. I we found him. Didn't tell him anything. Anything, I request. Pray then, always in the South Stones, told him everything. I'm right, I'm right. He's gone back. What's the matter with you? Girl's gone mad at Dick Fagin. No, she hasn't, Fagin. I am Fagin. Then keep quiet, will you? I wish I'd been struck down dead before I went to the hand and bring him here. I've been dying for my empathy, and that's all bad. I need enough for you without scaring him to death. Come, come, Nancy. You must have civil words. Civil words? Yes, you deserve them. I was on the streets for you when I was Captain's age, and I've been in the same trade, the same service, for 15 years. And don't you forget it. Shut your mouth!